what's that word? Let people know we got on 16 shot on visuals. It's Bunny Drip, and I'm from Nap. You say from Nap? Yeah. You know, for the people who ain't uh, familiar with exactly what that is, like, what is uh, the Nap? Indianapolis, Indiana. For sure. So, you know what? Uh, got you in Chicago right now. Uh, I came out here to fuck with 16 Shot on doing sure, interviews. Sure. So I want to ask you about like your uh, upbringing and shit. Like you born and raised in Indiana? Yeah. So how was that? Like, you know, it's a couple parts of Indiana I've been to, like Hammond, Gary, shit like that. Like is Indianapolis similar? Hammond, Gary, them is like, that's a couple hours away from Indianapolis. So that's really a whole different territory, but growing up in that I was kind of bounced around so I don't live on every side of town except for really the uh the south side and shit my auntie raised me uh my father died when I was four and then when I got older I decided I was gonna move to Arizona just for something different so you know even though you was young uh what your father passing that for like do you uh kind of like remember the, like the day he passed or when he passed? Yeah, I remember, um, I remember being with my dad one time. Uh, other than that, I just remember that feeling of not having my biological father and um, being raised by another family member. But my brother and sister father, I consider him my real dad. So I always had a father figure. Um, it just didn't ever feel like that void was filled but I did definitely have some positive role models growing up. For sure. So did did you feel like uh, it was certain things that you probably would have got differently, like if your uh, biological father was there? Like was there ever times where I feel like I he here, but he ain't here the same as like my my uh, my dad would be. No, my dad never made me feel like that. He signed my birth certificate. Um, he actually <laughs> thought I was his until I was five. So then um, him and my mom got into it. And uh, just probably the way she grew up or whatever, I see a lot of women do this. She got mad and made me call him and tell him that he wasn't my real dad. Damn. And I, I remember her making me call my dad and say that to him, but then it made us closer. So it affected me, but it wasn't in a way of like, damn, I didn't grow up like just not having a father figure. Cause to this day, that's still my dad. That's who raised me. Wait, so hold on, I'm confused. You say your mama had you call him and say he not your real dad? Yeah, that was my brother and sister, daddy. That wasn't my biological father. So was that something that, that you knew from the uh, beginning, but he didn't know? No, I was five when she made me do that. Ah, uh, so you ain't really. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. She took me over to my real father's family house so that I could meet them. But it was a secret. I wasn't supposed to go and tell my dad, Sean. And then when they broke up, she made me call him and say that my mom said, you're not my daddy. That's crazy. And I remember that, but we still close. That's my dad. So you got like, you say you got like other siblings, shit like that too, right? Yeah, two brothers and one sister. Y'all all came up in the same household? Nah, we got split up. My mama got lupus when I was in the sixth grade. So my aunt raised me. And then my uh, brothers and sister, they was raised by other family members. And then when I was like, I say it started when I was 14, I started leaving. And then by 15, I was just outside by myself, figuring everything out. What made you start leaving around that age? Was the things going on at the uh, house? Um, yeah, like everything positive that I tried to do, my family tried to stop me. like. Um, I always had a hustle by myself, so when I was 12, I started cutting grass, like making $100 a day, doing $20 a yard. And then they started telling me, like, my cousin can't, if she can't come and cut grass with me, then I can't go cut grass, so I couldn't make no money. She want to get up at noon, I get up at 6. So now you done stopped my way of making money on that end. Then boom, now I done started leaving, selling weed. And then I started getting hit with the runaways and I just ain't want to be home no more. So was the, uh, you know, you, you know, hustling at a young age, was it cause like it was a lack of money or resources? 
Um, uh, it wasn't necess it wasn't necessarily a a lack of resources. Like we didn't go without, but we didn't just have the extravagant things either. So if we wanted anything extra, we had to go get it ourselves. <clears throat> so have you ever had any like crazy experiences, you know, being young, outside, trying to uh well I don't say trying, but you say you was doing like hustling, uh even cutting grass, whatever. Crazy like what? Shit, people trying to get out on you. You been a girl trying to sell weed. Uh, shit, you had to get out somebody, anything like. Hell yeah, I had a lot of crazy experiences. I'm trying to figure out what's something that I could talk about. Like, uh, me being underage and going through it. I'm trying to think what's something that I could actually talk about. I remember being in situations where like, I say I was 15, I wasn't no older than 16. And I always had my older cousin with me, my cousin Diamond, my favorite cousin. And she, um, she would be with me when I'm busting moves and shit. And it was this female, she kept on getting smart with me. So my cousin, she the type like, she big. So she with me, if I just look at her like, cuz get her, she will beat they ass. <laughs> so she ended up beating girl, the girl ass and shit while we in a hotel. And then now every time they see each other to this day, it still be a problem. And that was something that happened when I was 15 years old. So we yeah. definitely got into situations, but it was never nothing that was too crazy where we couldn't get out of it. Why is it still a problem though? You say 15? That's still because my cousin beat her up till she peed on herself. Oh yeah, well, you need to get, get that. Get that. So, she, <laughs> so every time she see my cousin, they fight to this day and it just be a problem, but it be making me mad because it's like, damn. Do your cousin I, keep winning or something? Cause yeah, you, she beat the girl ass every time, but she done had dudes jump on my cousin and now I'm in a whole different city. It went off. Yeah, we good though. Just got to talk about that. Yeah, that's for say, cause usually like when uh when people fight, mm -hmm. if it's another rematch, it's usually cause somebody felt like they lost. But when you keep doing it, it's like all right, that same it's either that same person lost or the next person just don't want to take that L and they wanna so that's why I asked, like, does she keep being up? They done fought at least four times. And nice. it's 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 not I wouldn't say it's necessarily because of me, but I was getting money and the girl just kept on being disrespectful and she was big. So my cousins beat her up. I looked at her and told her to do it and she beat her up and now we grown and it's still a problem. How you feel about the uh, Push the Peace movement? You you down there like uh, trying to squash that shit? I see you got relationships with Tay, shit like that. He be pushing peace. Uh Yeah, I'm down with that. I don't feel like it's some stuff that could be squashed though. I feel like it's kind of past that, but if people open to that, I'll be, I'll be cool with that. I'm not there with my cousin no more, so it's different. So you know, going back <coughs> to uh, Indiana, like what type of shit be going on out there in your part of the city? Mm, all kind of shit. Same shit that go on out here. <coughs> you feel like they got like a uh, as much like what would be the word like? Publicity out there? No. You know, in Chicago, you could be from a hood and the shit your hood did could give you an opportunity. <clears throat> mm -mm. I feel like in Chicago, y'all make it easy for y'all artists to blow up. Y'all got a lot of outlets. Y'all got um, people that, even if they um, not picking a side because that's not their position, like for instance, what you doing, you creating a platform for the artists that's out here. And that, we don't really got that. Everybody really be against each other. It's not too many artists that's gonna come together. It's not no real blog sites out there. And it ain't, it's not no rappers that done blew up out of that. Only person that done blew up out of that is Mike Epps and Vivica Fox. And they ain't come back to the city and do nothing for nobody. What's so. up? But rapper wise, it ain't nobody that done blew up. I feel like a lot of, uh... Don't get me wrong, because I, I, I definitely see the difference with Chicago and a lot of cities as far as, like, the uh, attention, shit like that. But I think, shit, people even here even feel like that, like, it ain't a lot for us. Like, it's a lot of attention, but it's not a lot of opportunities for people. That's why, like, if you look, it's a lot of rappers around this bitch that's, you would basically say famous, pulling millions of views, but their lifestyle don't equate for that, like, 
they not getting that type of money. So it'd be like, it's like a blessing and a curse. Cause like when you somebody and you got all this attention, but you still in the hood, that's like, you know, that's dangerous as fuck. Cause you could have been somebody nobody cared about, but now that you got clout, you worth killing. And uh, if you look, a lot of people die here. So it's like, it's like a blessing and a curse. Cause having all this attention and not knowing what to do with it or not having opportunities. I feel like in that though, when that happened, a lot of people move from the city. Yeah. Like if you blow up in that, the same thing gonna happen to you. A lot of people, when they be on their way up, they get killed. So it's the same, but you gotta be able to decipher, all right, um, I done outgrew my city, so I need to move around. If you mm. can't decipher that and you choosing to stay in that same place, you can't think that it's not gonna happen to you. For sure. I barely go back to my city. I think it'd be, it'd be hard, like a lot of people, some people even had the money to leave their city, but they don't have the money to leave their city and move how they need to move. I mean, they're like, if you if you a rapper like in Chicago, like I'm just gonna say like a GD rapper, I ain't gonna say no name, but just a GD rapper from the city. You been a GD rapper, the enemies the enemies you got, they around the world. Like you can die in whatever city, cause there's so many people that then got money and traveled and went here and made connections here and made connections there. So it's like, I think a lot of people, they think like, why you don't just leave the city? You got some money, but it'd be like, they'll leave the city and get back up. Like I, I just seen it, like even with me, like working with everybody and traveling, I used to be a cameraman. So I used to go out of town with people, do all this shit. I was with some rappers uh, from 63rd, we in Atlanta. And they, uh, they, they outside or whatever. And some girls, they kicking it on, they kicking it, talking, they don't even know each other. And then they mention where they from. They uh, y'all from Chicago, y'all ain't from 63rd. They get to show no tattoos, all this shit. But long story short, them girls finna back door, back door them niggas. Like, what well, the reason it didn't happen was because of me. Cause I'm out there with them and they they pull out their camera on Snapchat and they like, yeah, we were some niggas from 63rd. And I'm the first person on the camera, like, don't put me in there. Cause I ain't from, you know, like, that's gonna make you look like something it ain't. So, uh, they hit me up and was like, bro, we was just from the back door, y'all. And I'm what? You know what I feel about them type of situations? It was two things that you said. Them type of situations happen when you leave one environment and you try to operate the same way in another environment. And now that's not your territory. So the people who territory that is, they know how everything works. You could go to different hoods all around the U.S. and they all operate differently. You can't leave here and then expect to go somewhere and operate the same way, you're going to get the same results. What's up? If you're going to go somewhere else and you're trying to be productive, then you should try to do things differently. And that's what I did. So, yeah, what, what would you say like you did differently when you uh, moved around? When I left NAP, I left the streets behind completely. I went out there and went legit. So I didn't get into no illegal shit. I don't know about all the extra stuff that go on out there because everything I do is legitimate. I started opening up businesses. I was working a regular job to get my bread right. When you, like when you were saying, um, it's people that got money, but they don't have enough money to operate the way that they want to in another city. I left that. I lost everything behind the case and went out there just for a fresh start with $1,500. So I don't think that you need a certain amount of money. If you a hustler and you know how to build your shit back up, you could go do that anywhere. Yeah, you're right. Cause I didn't, I didn't uh, see a couple, plenty of people do it for real. Like the people I see do it a lot is like strippers. I ain't gonna lie. Like I see a lot of strippers just go to the city and not know nobody. Like or go out there and move out there, and they be taking chances. It'd be crazy shit they be doing, but I done seen people like actually you know, make it happen. But uh, one thing I noticed you said was uh, you lost everything like behind a case. Like what happened with that situation? Um, Just me being accused of things. So the cases is still open. So it's not something I can elaborate on. But when I say lose everything, like um, you in the streets and you not necessarily getting all your money legitimately, but now everything is so hot to where you can't do shit. So now your money done stopped. Now, boom, the people done came and kicked in everything, put holds on everything. So it kind of just 
force you to figure something else out. So how long did it uh, take you to like, you know, to figure that out and, and restructure uh, your life? Um, I would say it took me a couple years to get to the point where I felt like I was comfortable again as far as financially. So, like I said, when I left NEP, I went to Arizona with $1,500 because everybody say, well, when I get this type of money or this amount, then I'm going to leave. But then they get tricked out they spot waiting. You don't need that to go figure it out in another city. So I took that 1500 got my first spot in Arizona. Boom, I started working jobs and shit. In the meantime of me working jobs, I just woke up one day like, I ain't going back. And I always knew how to do nails. So then I'm like, I'm about to go get my nail license. Boom, I go get my nail license. I'm doing nails out of my house. One of my clients tell me to make a Facebook page. I made the Facebook page and then that first day of me posting, I've been booked the next day ever since. And then I just started growing and I saved up, got my nail shop, built that business up, now it's a franchise. So it wasn't easy by any means, but I did it and I did it legit. So I noticed like you got a nice following on your uh, Instagram. What did it come from? Did it come from the nails or did it come from? Nah, I came from, <laughs> really? Why you make me laugh? <laughs> <laughs> My following on Instagram, I'll say like around, it was around September or something. I think I made this little post and shit. Cause I think I was sitting at right under 30K for a minute, just doing little random posts. But now I've been consistent on it. And it was really just me on some bullshit, me and my son. He was like, mom, can you spray my hairline real quick? So then I did it and then I woke up and that post was going viral. And that's how everything started. So I was going through Reddit, and mm -hmm. they basically was accusing you of having something to do with the death of a girl named Angie. And they were saying something like, you and her are supposed to have issues over your ex-husband at the time. And she got invited to a party by you. They said they seen your car on the, on the camera, trailing her car like, 3 a.m. leaving, some shit like that. And uh, they said something like they found the body in the backyard of like some some type of property tied to your, ex, your ex-husband. Somebody supposedly said something like they even uh, said they got paid to bury the body by your ex-husband. All type of crazy That's ass crazy. shit, right? And it's a whole page on Reddit with all this shit about you. And I want to ask you, like, have you seen any of this shit? I ain't never been on Reddit when you was telling me about Reddit earlier. That's the first time I ever heard about that. But the rest of that stuff is still an open case. I can't really speak on it. As far as me having an issue with somebody, I don't got beef with nobody. I don't have an issue with her. So you got locked up for, like, multiple murders? Oh, not locked up, but, like, questioned or snatched up? I've been picked up, yeah. How many times or how many murders have you been picked up about? Several. You said seven? Several. Several? How is that dealing with it? Like, how do you go into those situations? Um, the best way I can explain it is if I get picked up and I'm not under arrest, I don't have nothing to say to you. So am I free to go? I ain't ever talked to the police. I ain't ever gave a statement on nobody else. I ain't ever gave a statement to incriminate myself. I just leave it at that. I don't have nothing to say. Am I free to go? <clears throat> and you know when you under arrest, they gonna tell you what you charged with. They gonna take you to the back. So if you still got me here asking me all these questions, like I don't have anything to say to you. I'm not ever gonna have anything to say to you. So was that something you was taught or was that something you learned? To, uh, <clears throat> well, it come with the territory. It's just like growing up, coming up where I'm from. Like, even if you innocent, guilty, whatever the case may be, like, you should not be talking to the police. They're not trying to do nothing nice to you. They're trying to put you in jail. So I'm not going to say anything because you're going to try to flip anything that I say. So it's been engraved in us. Like, I don't give a, what type of situation it is. I'm not talking to the police about nothing. See, I feel like it's something you're not giving us, right? Because it's like, 
<laughs> as you talking and shit, like everything positive, you saying like nothing going on. I asked you like what type of shit you was into growing up. You like, I so a little weed, this and that. But then it's like you get snatched up for all these fucking murders. So it's like, what what type of life were you living? You know, before you uh, went That's to That's a catch twenty two. That's your hypothesis. You just gave me your theory based off what everybody else say about me. And I'm telling you who I am. All right, so the next question would be, why Why do everybody else say this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it's my eyes, right? <laughs> what you see in them, they hazel. I don't know what you talking about. I mean, like, if, if it wasn't for Reddit and I ain't seen none of this, I, I wouldn't know, you know? But like, seeing all this and reading all this shit and then looking in your eyes and you just staring at me look like this, is like, I don't know, you got me questioning, like, what's, what's I'm going I'm supposed to be assertive, right? I'm supposed to look at you in your eyes. No, you, you ain't Anytime I get picked up, I'm gonna look at a detective the same way because you asking me questions trying to incriminate me, not saying that's what you trying to do. But you have to be assertive and you have oh, to let people know. I'm not calling you the police. <laughs> but you got to be assertive. You got to let people know that you mean what you say. You're going to believe somebody that can't look at you in the eyes. They keep looking down. They keep playing. I can't be assertive and look at you. This is who I am. I had a, yeah, like selling weed. Um... I done been put in other situations too. Like, it's gonna be stuff that I bring out in my book. Like, I didn't. I had a fucked up childhood. Like, growing up, I was, it was a lot of stuff that happened to me that um, I don't look at it as a negative thing anymore. It shaped me into who I am. But I didn't have it easy by any means. So um, when people look at who I am today, this is like I'm who I am because of everything that I went through. You working on a book right now? Yeah. You got a name for it? I don't have a name for it yet, but I got quite a bit of it finished. So what is it, like an uh, autobiography? Yeah. But it's, um, I would say some of the things that happen in the book is exaggerated a little bit. And eventually I would like for it to become a movie. Because I really feel like my life a movie. Like, come on, I'm a female. I don't been through some crazy shit like you got any people helping you with the uh, the book or anybody that you feel like to help you with a movie? I have one person helping me with the book right now. As far as the movie, it's not something that's in play right now, but it's one of my goals. So like, how's your uh, relationship like, like right now? Relationship? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm single. What's up? So, uh, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> do you mind speaking on like your uh, last situation? Because they said he was married or something like that. Mm, that was like a couple of situations ago, but yeah, I was married. And like I said, he didn't want me to do this. He didn't want me to be in the industry. He didn't want me interacting with so many people. And I wasn't happy in that situation, so I decided to leave. And now it's more so of a thing where it's like, if you're not gonna be understanding of me and everything that come with me, then it's gonna be a waste of my time, you hindering me. So I'm okay with being by myself right now. So if he was a girl, let's just say like, what type of uh, person would you be looking for? Like, as far as like, what you feel like could handle you or your type? I ain't gonna say what somebody that could necessarily handle me. Um, but I would say they would just have to be understanding, um, ideally, it would probably have to be somebody that's in the industry that understand, like, we could be busting moves together and we being productive, getting these interviews, getting these video shoots, doing all of that type of stuff. Because if I'm out going to this state, this state, and you at home, or you going to work every day, you gonna feel some type of way, it come with the territory. It's gonna have to be somebody that's able to be on the go with me. Makes sense. So, 
Do I ask you about like no, I did ask you about who you were going to work with, like but you was naming people you said like on some right now type shit. Mm-hmm. Who would be like your uh biggest you know, like that's the one? I don't I feel like um I don't put them in the categories like, uh, I wanna work with this artist and this artist is like way out of my league. I don't look at it like that. So I ain't nobody that you feel like you wouldn't even even think about asking for a feature. Well, it's like uh, it's some it's some it, people. Like, nah, I feel like um, it's some people that even if I love them as an artist, maybe our music is not the same. I don't know how we could create something that would go well together. So it's not that I wouldn't want to work with you. It's maybe we got how. two different sounds. Yeah. You got any other goals like long term, short term, anything like that? Yes, I do. So uh, just like how I use nails as a stepping stone for me to, uh, I build my nail brand up. I'm going to just use that as an example. I'm going to give you the short version. Built that brand up. Boom. Now I'm stepping out of that brand and I'm going into the music, the content, the uh, acting. Boom. I'm not going to want to do this forever. So then I'm going to use this as a stepping stone. Now I have this huge platform and I plan on going to law school next year. So that's one of my long-term goals, go to law school. And then eventually <clears throat> when we talk about prison reform, one of my long-term goals, I would say by the time I'm 40, that's giving myself ample time to accomplish the things I want to accomplish in the rap game, maybe get into some movies, different stuff like that. You know how we have prisons set up right now. And it's like, um, the conditions that the inmates are living in. I want to have a a prison that's set up to actually rehabilitate people. So you don't, I don't know any prison that actually rehabilitates people. Like more often than not, you going back to jail after you get out. So this type of prison system is going to be set up to where it's not going to be extravagant but it's not gonna be like these horrible living conditions like you don't have like a small studio apartment it's gonna be a privilege to come here i see it being a long waiting list of uh people trying to get into this program when they get released from prison if you was only locked up for selling dope because you was trying to take care of your family then obviously you have some type of hustle about yourself you have some type of business mind so we gonna set you up in programs to where you can succeed after you leave when you in there, so it's not gonna be this thing where it's unaffordable for your family and friends to talk to you. We'll give you X amount of minutes for this price. It's not gonna be a pay for every call, but it's gonna be a privilege to come here. And I already done started writing everything up as far as how I want it to look. Um, We not gonna accept sex offenders or people that done told on people simply because simply because it creates hostile environments. So it's not like I'm just, I just have this thing against, yeah, I don't fuck with you like you a sex offender or you a rat X, Y, and Z, but we all know it create hostile environments. So this is gonna be an environment where people can actually thrive. When you get out all this grant money that these prisons is getting for these inmates, y'all can afford to go get them like a little key or something so they can have transportation when they get out set them up with funds and a plan for them to actually succeed when they get out so they don't have to go back to prison. That's one of my long-term goals. It seems like the system's set up for people not to, you know, grow once they leave. That's where I want to create change. Do you feel like that's going to be something hard to accomplish? I do. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people in positions of power to try to stop me from doing it. Yeah, it's a lot of people that want it too, though. Like, a lot of people with influence. I don't know if they be scared to speak on it. I see it, some people do it. Like, I don't know how serious they'd be about it, but I see Kim Kardashian being into stuff like that. Yeah, because just imagine that, like, um, if we take this room that we in right now, and this was divided up into three small suites, like, but these are, they get their own little beds. Now, boom, y'all have a phone. Everything is monitored anyway, so why we can't, say here um y'all pay this like a phone plan it may be a little bit more expensive but it's not gonna be a thousand dollars to talk to this person whenever you want to while they in prison 
but this it's gonna be such a privilege to be here that the inmates are gonna make sure that this is a good environment. They're not gonna let nothing crazy happen in here because they're not gonna wanna leave or be kicked out of it. This is gonna be something good for people. Yeah, I, I, I used to look up stuff. Like I seen like our uh, prison system is different from other places. Like it's some places where you go and they actually like give you reform, like you say, like they- We they, don't have it in the US. Yeah. So. Yeah, because it's like I understand like this is supposed to be a punishment, but some people are not in jail for the rest of their life. So they do need stuff in place so that when they get out, they don't go back. And why you still get punished after you did your time? Yeah, I, I feel like certain charges that shouldn't just carry over like that because then when you come home and you got all of these charges, you can't go get a job. That's what I'm saying. You can't even apply for so certain grants and things like that. Can't live certain places. Yeah. Housing. Yeah, you can't you can't live in so certain like places, you so you still do. being punished for the rest of your life. If you ain't a person who got the mindset to think like, all right, let me create a business where I don't gotta work for nobody, I don't gotta listen to nobody, then what else can you really do? But we got to change that, though. Like, we can keep on talking about it, but we got to start learning the ins and outs of this judicial system and how these laws work and uh, what steps we got to take to actually make change. We have to do that. They're not going to do it. They're okay with how the system been set up. So is there anybody you would want to link with and, uh, you know, put something together? Mm, I feel like it's definitely a lot of people that can uh, help me bring it to light. But I know that I'm going to be able to get in the room with these type of people from this stepping stone, the rap shit, and me just being who I am. That's going to put me in the right room with people that can actually help me make that come to light. So your vision way bigger than like what you've been doing or what you're doing right now. Like yeah, it's a stepping stone. Everything like a, a next step. Yep, stepping stone. So once you accomplish something like that, would you feel like you would have something else and just keep on? Or was it like you got an end goal? I'm pretty sure I'll come up with something. Eventually I do want to just relax and enjoy life, but I feel like I still got so much work to do right now. So. So what's some of like your uh, goals now type shit? Like what, what direction are you trying to take things in? Now uh, I've been less focused on nails so I don't do nails full time no more. Um, and I really just been locked in in the studio. I'm all in with this going on. Yeah, I, I noticed even like three years ago, you uh, you, know, you had a song with like Timbo, shit like that. So like you you been uh, like fucking with Chicago artists and shit like that or was that just? Well. Yeah, somebody, it was uh, somebody that was in Arizona that had introduced me to Timbo and told me I should do a song with him because he was hot at the time and uh that's how that got set up but i've been consistent on my music for the last year and i just want to do it full time now i do want to get into some movies as well that's why i'll be doing them skits like on some comedy shit. but that's the main two things i've been focused on my clothing line so what got you into the uh, music like what inspired you mm, i started doing songs when I was like 14. Um, and then it was kind of like an in and out type of thing. I was never consistent with it. I had ended up getting married and my husband didn't want me to do music because he didn't want me interacting with so many people. And then when I left him, that's when I said I'm about to go hard. So I've been wanting to do it. I just didn't have the opportunity to do it because I wasn't in the right situation. Now I done, uh, I sold my salon so that I could focus on my music full time and that's how I've been able to grow my social media how I have so quick. So you know how is it uh dealing with like all the all the shit you deal with as far as like either open cases, rumors, people, you know, spreading your name, shit like that. Like how is it dealing with that and still striving, trying to, you know, uh grow with the music shit. Cause you know it's like when you doing music, you make your life public. So now everybody see you, everybody to talk about you, comment, shit like that. Like, is it kind of hard trying to do the right thing when you got a lot of 
like negative energy surrounding you? Mm, I wouldn't say it's necessarily negative. I feel like it's a gift and a curse. So people can think and feel however they want to feel about me. But then you got a whole nother group of people that's attracted to me based off of that, that don't believe the bullshit or I don't give a fuck about none of that. I still fuck with you. So, and then when it comes to the music industry, even if it wasn't on that scenario, it could be anything about you that they're going to try to pick apart. So you're going to have to have thick skin regardless. So it don't bother me. So I had, uh, I had seen like a, a article where I don't, I don't know if this well I seen you I seen you do a live so you basically said like because people was trying to say you left in the in the what was this, Indianapolis mm-hmm. yeah they still trying to say you left Indianapolis and went to Arizona because you was on the run and shit like that but like you you said you like you not on the run you don't have no wants anything like that right? no I left Nap on my own terms. That whole little situation, I think I left Nap like six or seven months after that. That was on my own terms, my own choice. So can you like, I, I know it's like open type shit, but can you elaborate on like what exactly happened? Like if you got like, you know, snatched up, question and thing like that, like was it a situation where like you was a person of interest or? Uh, I can't elaborate on it too much, but... I've been picked up. Um, I can't necessarily say that I've been questioned because I refuse to talk to them. But I done been picked up in that and I done been picked up in Arizona. So it's just one of them situations where they gonna have to do their job pretty much. They ain't got nothing to do with me. So what was the what was the reason why everybody well not not everybody, I ain't gonna say everybody because I don't I ain't heard nobody say this shit, but the internet, but <laughs> reading the internet, what was like the reason that people were uh, pointing a finger at you? Because I was saying like the 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 girl mama said like you called her and told her her last words was this or some shit like this. I never talked to her mama. So the thing about that is, is when when tragedy happened and people feelings is hurt, they gonna want somebody to blame, and I just ended up being that person. I don't care to clear up nothing about the lies that they done told or none of that. It is what it is. I want to keep elevating and moving forward with my life. And I just don't entertain it. They're going to forever try to pick me apart about that situation. I just don't entertain it. So with that, with the uh, girl, like, was y'all, because they, they was trying to say, like, y'all was on tour. Was y'all friends or, like, like, how did the situation go? Because they were saying she got booked for a party and then ended up missing. And um, a lot of that stuff was not true. I never had no issue with her. So what, you know, what actually was true? Like, I, I'm not asking you, because I, I know you say, like, it's open, so I'm not asking you to talk about shit that you can't talk about. But, like, is there anything you can talk about as far as, like, what did happen that night or, uh, you know, your relationship with her versus, like, what they saying? Like, is there anything that you've seen on the internet that you know, like, not, that's not true type shit? Uh, it's a lot of stuff I done heard that's not true, but I'm not going to address everything that's true or not true. I'm just not going to speak on it at all. For sure. When this interview drops, they're going to go watch this. They're going to pick apart everything that I do. I'm just not going to speak on none of it at all. Because if I say... Something, if I say I ate a cheeseburger, they gonna say, well, you said a hamburger in 2019. Like, I'm not gonna play that game with them. I just don't speak on it at all. All right. So I I don't, I ain't gonna ask you no more questions about what happened, nothing like that. But I do wanna ask you just about like the facts that, I ain't gonna say the facts, but what they say was facts. Cause I did see something where they said like somebody, uh was supposed to said they they was paid to bury a body or some shit like that. I don't know yeah. nothing about that. Yeah. If they implicated they self in that way, that's on them. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, I know you don't know nothing about that, but I'm asking you like, was those actually things that was said? Because this, I just scrolled through, the, I told you about the Reddit shit. I scrolled through the Reddit shit. So 
anybody can type anything. I don't know like if these are things that the police are really saying they got or if I ain't never been on Reddit, so I couldn't <laughs> tell you. I'm for I real, know. I can't tell you. I'm for no. Nah, I, I, I fuck with how you ask the question. I understand why you ask them that way. So I don't, I'm not trying to. I don't want you to think I'm trying to get you to. No, I get it's, it. It's just a crazy story. So I know a lot of people that's watching this don't got no clue what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> like it's way more I could say, but I'm trying to figure out how to even talk about it and what you can talk about. It, you know. Uh huh. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just one of those situations, like. So, was it other situations like similar to that, or like people were trying to blame you for things? And I don't got accused of a lot of different things. I don't been picked up for a lot of different things, but I don't know. I just don't let it bother me. I let people think what they want to think. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. Like I don't want to push this narrative, but like from what I be hearing, like they down there be comparing you to to uh, <laughs> to Tay. <laughs> that's crazy. So I don't know. That's why I'm trying to see like how can you believe we... that. Uh. I don't know. You can't judge a book by its cover. That's all I can say. I don't know. You crazy. I don't know them eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, do you feel like when uh, people be talking like that, shit like that, like that, it make people like fuck with your music more? I feel like Especially people that come from the uh, the same place that I come from, uh, growing up in a struggle, it make people have a different respect for you. Especially when you stand on shit. So, yeah, I feel I definitely feel like it make people fuck with your music more because you got people that's not rapping about their life, and then you got people it's like, nah, this is their life for real. I don't let people write for me like everything I be talking about be my real life. So you gonna have a different respect for somebody's music when you know it's coming from an authentic place. Yeah. I noticed that like, it could even be like people who are not the best rappers. Mm -hmm. but it's like when you when you can relate to it or you feel like you know they telling the truth, it's like you fuck with them more than some people that be better than them sometimes. Cause like, I don't know, it's it's sometimes like when certain people rap, it'd be like everybody might talk about like switches and shit like that, right? But sometimes it'd be like the details that'll let you know like oh they didn't pay you switches for real. Like somebody might just say, Oh yeah, I got a switch, but then somebody might really talk about like shaving the back down and putting it on. It's like a lot of people don't know that unless they really so It's the backstory that said. Yeah. So you don't gotta be the best artist. People fuck with you because you who you are. So I definitely agree. So you know what you saying like uh Indiana really don't got like those those type of platforms and shit like that. I feel <clears> like <throat> y'all could, people just gotta start it. Cause like if it's people, you know, like you, you never been uh charged or none of this shit, right? No. So you know it's people like you where it's like it's it's a lot of rumors and shit where it's like people wanna know what happened and this and that. So it's like it's definitely a lane there where if people started out there doing that shit and interviewing people like you and other people who got shit to talk about or can't talk about shit, and, uh, any any city could do it. It's just we don't know about this shit, you know? Like, yeah. uh, we wouldn't know this shit unless, uh, but it's like a blessing and a curse because it brings a lot of energy and, and attention, but it be good attention, bad attention. So it's like you got to. You just got to know how to maneuver through it because a lot of people look at it and it's entertainment for them. But then you got people like me where it's, that's something that you really went through or that you go through on a daily basis. So, of course, I'm going to protect myself at all times. In an interview, they be asking crazy stuff. What's the uh, craziest thing you've been asking in an interview? Did you do it? <laughs> do you know what happened? 
that's crazy to ask somebody that. How it's, you respond? It's, di <laughs> it's different if you take somebody and then this is a case that they don't had the the opportunity to take to trial and beat. But then it's a whole nother thing when anything that you say could be used against you. So I'm not clearing up nothing. So have you ever got arrested for like anything? Like as far as like not related to all the crazy? I can't even say I've been arrested. I done been picked up. I done got picked up by the marshals at the airport. Doors done got kicked in. Picked up at my job. Yeah, I done got picked up, but it's just one of those things where you don't have anything. So if I don't want to talk to you, you have to let me go. So, Anytime you make the decision to talk to them or give a statement, that's on you because you don't have to open your mouth and say nothing. And that's the route that I chose to take. I don't have anything to say. So if I'm not under arrest, am I free to go? So you don't got like no felonies, nothing like that, right? No. Oh, that's decent for you. Move around. You want to move around. Yeah. Yeah. And then Arizona, that's like a, a gun state too, right? Yeah, it's like an open carry. Oh, yeah. How is that? Like, when you want in a uh, community when it's open carry, does it does it feel safer? Or does it, like, how does that feel? Because I know, like, in Chicago, you used to, like, you walk past people that know they got a gun. You just ain't going to see it. But, like, how is it when you, you know, just see people? walking around with their shit. I can't say it's uh I can't say it make you feel safer, but it's like even in that whether we got laws that make it legal or not, everybody still got their pipe, so it don't matter. Yeah. Now it's just like we in a state where uh you think you hard cuz you walking around showing your gun and then me, I don't want nobody to know I'm strapped. I want you to think you're sweet. But you got a lot of people out there it's just like they walking around letting it be known that they got it on them. So I ain't gonna say that it make you feel any more safe. It's just like, it's every day because they was doing that back home too. So, you know, was there anybody that you looked up to coming up? As far as what, music? Yeah, or even role models, life, anything. Um, I would say, as far as in the music industry, it was a lot of rappers that I uh, that I listened to that I still want to work with to this day. Like uh, I grew up listening to Gotti. Um, my dad used to have me listening to Devin the Dude. Um, who's somebody else? Like that old Plies. I used to fuck with that old Plies. Um, role model wise, somebody I would say um, somebody that I looked up to that actually made an impression on my life was one of my teachers named Miss Keys. She actually helped me graduate from high school. Um, and that was something that I wanted to kind of accomplish just because I was that kid that everybody always thought was gonna fail because I had a, a you know, a hard upbringing. And then I, I can't say that I was just bad. It was a lot of stuff that I went through where I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna just do my own thing. So then it, it looked like to everybody else, I'm just this bad teenager. So it was my teacher, Effie Keys. She ended up helping me do everything that I needed to do to graduate on time. Um, and I was pregnant my senior year. Like she used to feed me, make sure I got home, doctor appointments, all of that. So the people like her that I ain't never gonna forget. That's crazy, I got somebody like that too. It's a, uh, the librarian though, her name is Hope. <clears throat> she basically did the same thing for me. Made sure yeah. I graduated on time because I, I, I was good at everything but math. Cause mm -hmm. I ain't pay attention to that shit. And as I'm we advancing the shit, I'm not realizing this shit changing. So once we got the algebra and they got to the putting letters and shit, and that, I, I was lost. Yeah. But she showed me a way to do it online, and I just copied and pasted the problems and put it up on some shit. And you got people there to see you, and they see something in you that you can't even see in yourself at the time. Yeah. So she, um, I don't know what it was. She just saw me and she believed in me. She knew I could do it. I was tired. I was pregnant. She would let me sleep in class and then I'd make up for my work like when I'm at home. She knew she wasn't supposed to be picking me up, taking me nowhere after school. But she did that because she knew I needed it. I didn't really have nobody. It's, it's like some teachers, they uh, go off your reputation and don't get to know you. 
and it just be bad. And then it'd be some teachers that actually like, I don't know, they, they actually pay attention to you. They get to know you and mm -hmm. they can actually be a positive influence. Like I probably only name like two people like that, but I feel like we need more teachers like that in the schools. Cause those teachers actually like, I, like how you speaking about it today, like we grown as hell, you still remember. Yeah, I ain't gonna forget her. She left that impression. So what's uh, something like you learned as far as like since you've been doing music? Something that, that you probably was shocked about the music industry, anything like that? Mm, I done learned a lot. So um, something that shocked me was the uh, behind the scenes stuff that a lot of artists don't even know about as far as the, the business aspect of it. So when I go into any situation, um, I'm looking at it as if it's a business and I want to know how I can make the most money possible. Um, and it's a lot of different things that I didn't quite understand um, as far as music, like with the publishing and making sure that like when you getting beats from producers that you doing a work for hire or you doing split sheets, because if you don't do that, then your music can't get synced. And a lot of people don't know what sync is and sync got rules so you can get your movie, your uh, music played in movies and on Twitch and different stuff like that. like. When they want to sync your music, you got to have all of your paperwork right. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of these producers don't even have they publishing registered to where they're a composer and then they have their business. So then you got to wait on that whole process. So it's a lot of it as far as the, the business side of it where I'm like, dang, it's like, it's a lot, but it's no way that people could ever know this is something that's necessary or you have to do this. It's not just, I'm about to go record and then I'm gonna put this song out. That's the easy part. So do you actually like invest into your uh, music? A lot, it's expensive. What's ways that you do it? The ways that I invest? Yeah. Um, I gotta spend money on everything. Studio time, mixing and mastering, production, photo shoots, video shoots, your travel expenses, your wardrobe. Um, it's, everything is expensive. I, I haven't really put no money into um, marketing everything as far as my social media, just being organic off people fucking with me. But I do wanna invest a little bit in marketing just to see if I can grow it even bigger. I ain't gonna lie what I would recommend with that because a lot of people, they just be paying like the ads and shit like Google, YouTube, shit like that. I don't, yeah, that's think, that's, I don't think that's really worth it for real. Cause like they gonna tax the fuck out you and probably give you 10, 20,000 views and they gonna tax you for that. But you can pay like a blog that ain't gonna charge no one there's that not five, 10,000, none of that shit probably. But I wouldn't even say pay a blog to just post those stuff because for instance, I think I paid World Star like thirty five hundred yeah, to post my song like yeah. in twenty probably twenty nineteen. Didn't do nothing for me. Yeah, I ain't talking that about was World Star. A, yeah, that was a waste of money. But as far as marketing, like what we doing right now is marketing. You got a platform and all of your followers like they probably don't know who I am. They probably never seen me before. So I'm finna get some new fans off of this interview. Then I'm finna go to this state, do this interview. That's marketing. For sure. I'd rather pay for something like that and put money into traveling and my expenses on that end than me saying, I'm finna pay this person to post my shit. Cause when it come to people posting me, all oh, that's organic. I'm not paying you to post me. I got too much traffic on my page, but people hey, that- though. Yeah, but people that already got platforms that post me free of charge, like some of the biggest artists, they post me free of charge. I'm never gonna forget that I'm always gonna fuck with you because of that. There's certain platforms that'll do that too though. Cause you, you, fucking, you fucking with me, not on the basis of I'm giving you something. That's why I like when they reach out to me first because it, it don't be awkward. Like I'm not no groupie. I'm not finna walk in the room like, can we take a picture? Can we do, I'm not gonna do that. So it kind of break the ice when some of your favorite artists or uh, people in the industry, period, actors, comedians, when they reach out to you, it's like, damn, that's hard, man. 
I feel, nah, I, 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 I get what you're saying. I feel the same way. Cause like, even if I'm telling you to do it, I don't, I ain't do it. But the only reason I'm saying So why you tell me to do because, it? Because like, I, I know it works because a lot of the shit that I do is based off of the shit I see on a, a few blogs. Like it's a few blogs I, I, I fuck with. Cause like the shit they post, I know it'd be like, it's usually somebody talented or some. So it'd be like, I, I, I'm going to pay attention to them. And with me, Sometimes, with me but knowing some, like some... who follow me and who follow them, it's a lot of people who beneficial. Like, like it's labels, it's all type of shit. You know, it's bigger bloggers, it's all the other bloggers. No jumper, say cheese, DJ academics, black, like all these. So it's like when you get on these pages, if you have the content that's worth blowing up and been saying, it's going to happen, and they're going to see it, and that's when those messages come, and phone calls come. So that's why I say like the blogs, not. Not world star though. Like I ain't dissing world star, but not world star. Like and that was a minute ago yeah. too. That was a waste <laughs> of money. Cause they charging a lot, but it's blogs that give you real exposure that that charge you less than a hundred dollars. And if they really, they might charge you the first time, but if you really hard, they just gonna start fucking with you for free. They gonna start posting. Like, yeah. I shout out Chicago Wave. Like it ain't the biggest. Like blog your stuff in the world, going viral in the world is already uh, posting your shit. They gonna do it too. Yeah. Now when that's when that's happening, yeah, everybody gonna fucking do it. Yeah. Then you don't gotta pay nobody. It don't fucking matter at that point. And I know there's one thing, like you could pay like one big blog to post something and if it do go viral, mm-hmm. all the other smaller blogs blogs post it anyway. Yeah. I think sometimes it'd be about who you know too. A lot of these artists, they just know the right people or they got PRs, they got managers that know the right people. So they getting this stuff free of charge anyway. I know like with the, I just dropped my first project on the 5th, so on Friday. And with the marketing for this project, my plan is to do exactly what I'm doing. Like start getting out there doing interviews more, going to do these freestyles, going to uh, do these live performances like for shooters only, like different stuff like that. Um, not so much just giving somebody some money saying, can you post this? Like I want to get my feet wet and put in that work myself. How you feel about uh, features and like paying for features and shit like that? Um, I know at this point right now, I'm not paying for no features. I'm putting everything into myself for my own career. I don't have no features on my EP. And I don't wanna uh, come into the industry like, oh, she only this cause she did a song with X, Y, and Z. Like, no, nah, I'm gonna do that when I'm already at the level that I wanna be at. Sure. Now, if the opportunity present itself and it's gonna be a situation that's beneficial, I would do a feature with somebody, but I'm not just gonna go give you 20 for a feature and I can put that into myself. Is there anybody that you want to work with? Like somebody that you fuck with, they music heavy? Yes, yeah, a lot of artists I want to work with. Ain't nobody specific, you want to name? You want me to drop names? Mm, females or males? Should I say you one or both? Mm, Female-wise, I definitely want to do a song with Lotto. Um, I feel like she's one of the hardest female rappers that's out right now. Um, And then male wise, I would love to do a song with no cap. And who else? I'm thinking like something that could happen this year type shit. And I'll say probably Gates. Gates always been one of my favorite rappers. Yeah. What about uh, Gates make you, make you rock on? Um, I started listening uh, to Gates like back when he was coming out with Trap Girl and 4.30 a.m., them type of songs. And it was just stuff that he was saying that I could relate to. So you uh Muslim too, right? Mm-hmm. How long you been Muslim? Um, I reverted to Islam in 2016. So when we say revert in the Quran, it says that all of us are Muslims unknowingly or knowingly. So a lot of people use the wrong term when they say we converted to Islam. No, you revert to Islam when you take your Shahada. So I grew up 
Christian, not by choice. And then I started asking questions because it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me. It wasn't something that I could relate to. So then I reverted in 16. Was it somebody that intro introduced you to it? No, I started doing my research on it on my own because people always had something to say about Muslims. I remember seeing them uh, promoting Islam just on the streets of Indianapolis, like on the corner. They would be selling their pies and they had their newspapers and their incense. And I used to be like, why everybody always got something bad to say about them? Like, you got people that, just like people say bad stuff about me, you got people that'll be intrigued by that. Like, well, damn, why y'all be hating on her so bad? And it, and it make you start doing your homework. Yeah. So then I started reading into it. I'm like, damn, this really makes sense. And then that's when I decided to take my Shahada. How can you say your life changed after that? Um, so when you take your Shahada, that's like um, you getting a clean slate. So you can compare it kind of to Christianity when you take your, when you uh, go and get baptized. So when I got baptized when I was eight and then I got baptized again when I was 16, it didn't feel like it was the right thing for me spiritually. I didn't feel any type of connection when I did it either time. That's why I did it the second time to make sure I wasn't tripping. Like I had got baptized and understand what this is for, but it didn't feel meaningful. It didn't feel like something that was a part of my purpose. When I took my Shahada, it just felt like everything around me opened up. I remember it was storming that day and then the sun came right out over me right after I took my Shahada. I wanted to go take my full guzzle and I just felt clean, I felt pure. And then now I just feel like instead of this being such a, oh, I gotta go to this church and get them this amount of money and be around these people, it's all about my intentions. As long as my intentions is good and they pure, that's the only thing that I'm gonna be judged on. Well, you know, before we close out, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything you want to get off your chest? You got all the questions. <laughs> nah, I ain't finna ask you. You over there questions. scared? Nah, I ain't scared. Why are you scared of me? You scared of me? Hell nah, they just gonna get the call of me the police. He's scared. <laughs> she trying to say I'm scared. This your TV show. You trying to set me up for failure. <laughs> 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 they already could be the cops. This ass the police. He's like, this, that, that. I could have. Do you judge people when you read stuff like that? No, because I don't know. I see shit about me that I ain't never do. You do? I definitely do. Yeah. So do you. you... <laughs> you got any music you working on or uh, release? Any projects? Stuff like that? Yep, my EP just dropped two days ago. It's called Miss Daddy. It's on all platforms. Let everybody know how to get over to all your social media. Mm, all my socials is the same. I mainly be on Instagram, though. So it's uh, Bonnie Drip, B-O-N-N-I-D-R-I-P. Bonnie don't got no E on it. And then my YouTube, the same. All right, for sure. Let everybody know who got with you for the interview. I'm 16 shot him. Hey, shout out to everybody that's tuned in to this video, man. I appreciate all y'all. If y'all want to show y'all appreciation back, just hit that like button for me, man. And follow all my social medias at 16 Shot on Visuals with a Z. Last but not least, though, check out my merch, man. Check out the merch below in the merch self. If y'all see something y'all like, man, y'all want to support, you know, cop a little something, gang.